Well, today's the day. I have finally found some time to cook down and render this fat into lard. And I'm hoping that it's going to be pure white and it's not going to be brown and gritty because I've never done this before. This is my first attempt and the fire is popping. So I'm right off um, the side of my porch where we have our little cooking area. This is Pat's electric smoker and then we've got a griddle over here and so here in front of me I have made a type of outdoor stove fire pit thing I've got my cast iron seasoned and it's free of any debris because I don't want anything floating around on my lard um, the fire is burning very slowly now we started it earlier today and I've let it kind of burn down. Pat thought coals would work better to keep it kind of low because you don't want a high temperature when you are making your lard because this is gonna cook down for like five hours. Okay, so I'm gonna start by adding some water to this. So this is, well, it's kind of hot water. I, I put the hottest water I could get out of my uh, sink. So it's not quite a cup it's maybe three-fourths of a cup because I don't have as much lard as um, I could so I'm just gonna add that and again the fire is not roaring but I can feel it. it it is hot down here so we want that low slow heat to just kind of um, get this water heated and get our lard in and it just start to melt so I'm gonna add that lard now or uh, pig fat sorry so here it is I had already ground it up and I had put it in the fridge and that's kind of what it looks like right now and here come the chickens they think I'm gonna give them some so I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna put it down in there in the water this is a nice day for this it's not too cold it's not windy beautiful chickens are nosy if I threw some of this out there they'd probably eat it <laughs> okay <clears throat> now if you can see the steam I don't know if y'all can see the steam I don't know what you're seeing on this camera I hope it's picking it up um, I'm gonna use a wooden spoon um, I just feel like it's the safest thing because you know plastic of course will melt and I don't know about metal I don't know if it would affect the flavor I'm not sure but for me I'm just gonna use a wooden spoon it seems safe so I'm gonna just break down this uh, pig fat in this water in my cast iron over low heat now I'm just gonna just watch it I'm just gonna kind of watch what it does um, and keep it stirred and watch the process of how it's going to melt down. Here's a little bit of a better view, I hope, that if you guys can see what it looks like. Um, I'm just kind of breaking the chunks up. Now, I've heard that you can um, either grind it, that's what I did, or if you don't have a grinder, you can cut it into small chunks, and this should work just fine. Um, if you cut it into small chunks, I believe that you will have more um, cracklins, or better sized cracklins, than what I'm going to have, because I chose to ground it up. So now I'm just going to like let this sit um, and heat up and watch my fire and stir periodically. So I'll show you the process as I go. Okay, this is about 30 minutes in and I just kind of really wanted to show y'all that it's kind of separating a little bit. It, it, it looks like it's starting to melt down. So this is 30 minutes over that low fire. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a fire, but there is heat. So what I'm going to do now is, since the coals look like they're about to go out, I'm going to go find some more um, 
small, 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 small slivers of wood to keep this small fire going. So I went over by Patrick's wood pile. Ah, I'm dropping it. Oh, there goes one. <laughs> And I found just pieces of wood from where he's um, split wood. Uh, so this is what I'm going to use for this. And I'm just going to put it in here and I'm going to get these going just to keep the fire. Again, I keep repeating it very low because we want to cook this low and slow. Okay, so the fire really took off. I'm hoping these are going to burn down quick. So as this is burning, I'm going to keep stirring this um, lard fat I don't know what to call it I'm rendering down fat I'm rendering down lard I don't know anyway I'm gonna keep this stirred so that it doesn't burn to the bottom this is about an hour in as you can see um, it is really separating this is a good thing so I'm just gonna periodically update you guys probably every hour I'll show you what the process is uh, because I'm just going to continue to maintain the fire, continue to stir as needed, make sure nothing's sticking. Um, I may see if I can get a temperature reading on this. Let me go see if I can find one of Patrick's little tools, his barbecue tools, and see if I get permission. So that we can kind of see what the temperature is so that you guys can know at home about um, what temperature it should be. Okay, so Patrick went and got a thermometer. We're going to check the temperature. Um, I need to get the fire. I put a log on, but it's not going, so I need to get this fire going up a little bit to get this temperature up. Not too high. Looks like it's reading. So that's probably a really good temperature. Oh, yep, it caught fire there. So, um, can I see it? Just enough. I believe so. Just enough to melt and to keep it warm, to cook it. Um, I need to get it up to a slight boil, I think, to get it boiling now. It's been an hour. So that's the current temperature. Okay, it's been about two hours now, so we're gonna check the temperature. And um, I should have just left that alone. See what it's up to. Oh, it's, it's uh, pretty warm, but as you can see, it's really, really separated. So, probably about two to three more hours, I think, before we can strain this out. Um, yeah, that's, that's probably a good temperature out there, about 170. Don't need to get it any more hotter than that. So we don't want to burn the lard, we just want to cook it down. You know, separate this, this fat and um, bur uh, burn out the water. <laughs> cook out the water in the process so okay guys we'll be back in an hour we are approaching about hour three this is what it currently looks like we're going to take a temperature reading and i'd actually just put a log on the fire so the fire's kind of you know it's getting there um, so here comes Patrick. He's going to check the reading for here me. Here comes the hand model. <laughs> We're almost done with this. I can't wait. I think it's going to be really hot because I we just could, put that log on. We could use this to check Chloe's temperature. <laughs> well, she's better today. You have to be soaking in the lard. Um, but it is really separated. And then we'll drain all this stuff off. So I'm going to give it a, another hour or so. I'm going to get my table and all my supplies set up. And, um prepare for the straining process so we're still holding about 170 well it looks like it's going up and up and up probably because I put that log on yeah it'll take a few seconds to settle so I think that's a good temperature honestly I don't know if that's the right temperature but this looks right because um, we don't want to cook it to a boil but it's hot so when you stir it you're going to see some steam come out of it 180 so don't need to put any more wood on the fire for a little while but we've been holding steady working with the fire stirring it as needed um, and just watching it so this process maybe not is ideal for everybody um, but I wanted to try it old school style 
So that's why I chose to do it out on the fire in my cast iron um, and see if I could see if I could do it. Oh yeah. Okay, guys, you heard that. Um, oh, oh. hello. <laughs> I have got everything set up because I believe it's time. It has been another hour, and um, I've got my everything here. I'll show you what I got here on this table. We're getting ready to take this off. Where am I at? This off the fire. Um, it looks good. It looks okay. It looks interesting. I am very, very anxious to see how this is going to turn out. This is the final result. It's just really watery, so that's a good thing, I believe, because it is separated. And so when this solidifies, it should be pure white lard. I'm hoping it's white. That's really what I want. I want white. I had cut the fat off of the belly, and that's what I used when we were doing the bacon parts. So I'm hoping that that's going to be the good fat. Um, do we want to do a reading, a temperature reading, the final temperature before we take it off? Um, I'm just curious to see what temperature it is before we. I'll put that here. I have to give it a few seconds to. Get yeah. Because I got to keep it up off the bottom so it's reading the stuff and not the pan. So it's climbing. I'm hoping that it's not too hot. It doesn't look like it's too hot. Um, I'm gonna wait because it takes a while for this thermometer to get to temperature. Okay, well, it's getting up there. It was kind of boiling earlier, so I hope it didn't burn anything. It never stuck to the bottom. Never did it stick to the bottom, so that's a good thing. Yeah, it got pretty hot, didn't it? Mm -hmm. That could be. That could be my disaster. <laughs> But honestly, I don't know how hot well, it, it should have been. Well, it was just starting to kind of bubble, so it was probably around two, okay. 220. All right. I'm going to say that's good because we know that it's around 200 degrees or so. Estimate. I'm an estimator. That's probably why a lot of my stuff don't turn out. <laughs> we're at 198 degrees. Okay. There you go, guys. Now we're going to pour it in. So I've got my strainer here like a type of a cheesecloth, and then my colander into this silver pot, if I can focus. That's what I'm using. And then over here, I've got my jars. I don't know if this is enough jars or not. Then I've got this to use when we pour it into the jars. So this is the process. Okay, here he comes with it. Ooh, off the fire. Ooh. So we're going to just let that drain out. And then we're going to, oh, we're going to fry these, these little cracklings. <laughs> That's going to be good. Um, it'll be okay, maybe it's just cracklings. So I hear it. So we're going to give it a minute and we'll come back and uh, we'll check the final result. So while that is draining i asked patrick to put this back on the fire let it get hot again because i'm going to pour them cracklings in here and we're going to fry them up they're going to be with our dinner tonight and after all this we are going to fry some pork chops that we processed last week from our pig on this grill it's going to be our dinner it's going to be amazing Okay, so it's still kind of draining out, and I'm just going to um, try to squeeze some more out, because see, it's still coming out. So, it is very hot and greasy. This is what it looks like. Um, I didn't get very much, so it's probably not going to fill up all four of these jars. <laughs> so, I'm going to get them poured, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. This is what we rendered. Two jars and just a teeny bit in this one. So I've got the lids on there. Um, I was hoping for four, but you know what? It's okay. We didn't take all the fat off that we could have. The next time we do it, you know, we'll know a little more. So I'm okay with this. 
I'm going to make a couple batches of soap with it and uh, use some for biscuits and, and try that out with our sausage. So um, I can't wait to show you guys what it looks like when it sets up. I've just got these lids on very loosely so that it can set up and hopefully it'll be white. I was going to put them in there. The crack ones. You got to fry them. I'm going to fry them. There's no grease in there to fry them. That was greasy. Okay. So, looks like the pan's ready. I'm going to throw the cracklins in and, and we'll see what um, they do. They're still very greasy. They're dripping. I don't know. I've never done it. But if this is an experiment to show you guys what to do or maybe what not to do. <laughs> you hear it? Oh, listen. <laughs> I'm excited. We're going to pick these up and see what they taste like. I went ahead and put some more wood on the fire because I didn't feel like this was getting hot enough. Um, at one point, they were popping out of this thing and then they kind of just sizzled down. So I'm hoping that um, by putting more wood, kind of building this fire up, it's going to heat this up enough to fry these. Oh, they're popping again. It's time to stand back. At this point, I don't think I know what I'm doing because I can't get over there to get to it because can you see it's like popping, 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 popping. There's grease popping everywhere. I got the fire too hot. Okay, so this was a bad idea. <laughs> this was such a bad idea. So I think it is safe to say this part is my fail. I'm hoping that, oh, I'm hoping that, um, oh gosh. <laughs> I'm going to cook them, but I'm really hoping that the lard sets up and at least this process was good for that. But as far as the cracklings, guys, uh, this isn't working for me. Pat thought that I needed to put more grease in here, um, but I think I got the fire too hot. So I don't think we're going to be eating these. Plus, I ground my meat. I didn't... I didn't uh, cut my meat into pieces, so that could also have um, uh, something to do with this process. Is it's not huge pieces; it's ground up. So I don't know. If y'all know, be kind, but uh, leave a comment and let me know about it. So the next time I'll know what to do. Because I can't just leave stuff alone. <laughs> I went ahead and pulled some of them out. I feel like we need to go ahead and try them. I don't want to just waste them. Uh, oh, look at all the grease. Oh my goodness. This is the pan I'm going to put our meat in, so I need to keep that grease going this way. But anyway, can you see it? I don't know how well this is picking up, but there it is. Um, I'm still hopeful. I'm still hopeful for this. Look at that. It's turning white. So, we're trying them. And I'm just like... They're kind of soggy because of the grease and they almost taste just like bacon so probably a little seasoning or a little salt what do you think cody seasoning and salt they could work so i'm not saying that was a total fail because i may eat some with my macaroni and cheese again because i can't leave stuff alone i've added salt oh i got a splinter just a minute oh that hurts okay so I've added salt and uh, I'm going to try it again because I really don't want this to be a fail. Better. They need seasoning. Um, it's like a weird bacon. I am going to save them and sprinkle them over my shells and cheese tonight. Macaroni and cheese. They're going to have with dinner and see how it goes. Because I really don't want to waste them.
it's about an hour and it's turning white and I am so very excited. So it looks good. It's set up real good. It needs to sit a little longer, but I'm very happy with it. Um, I am going to try to make some biscuits tomorrow with some of it. And dinner is almost done. Here are the pork chops of all different varieties. These are boneless. These are bone in. This is our dinner. I'm absolutely loving it. And meat just tastes better when you cook it over a fire. I won't do this every day because it's a little work. But I already had the fire going so I thought might as well. So clearly this was an all-day process I started about 1130 this morning and it is now after five so dinner's done I'm gonna go in and serve my family um, and just feel accomplished I feel accomplished today so I hope that this gave you insight or inspired you to give it a try um, but remember, if you're an expert and you've been doing this for years and years, remember this was my first time. So if you have some kind comments and you would like to leave them, uh, please do. If there was something that I forgot to do, if there was something that I didn't do right, if you have any tips and tricks about like how hot it should get or any of those things, feel free to share because other people will see it too. Um, I've also heard that you can do it in a crock pot, but course this was my first time and I chose to do it outside um, in the summer if there was ever a time when we did it in the summer I think the crock pot would be ideal because who wants to stand over a fire in the middle of the summer not me not me so I'm excited to, to give this a try in some biscuits and I'm gonna make some soap with it and I hope that the next time that we process the pig the next pig I'm going to be able to get more fat and render more lard and, and have a bigger batch. So, God bless you if you have stuck it out this far. Um, and we appreciate you. We appreciate your support when you watch our videos. So, um, God bless. Have an amazing day.